Michigan recruiting in 2023. It's time to officially press the panic button. Now, guys, I did a video about a week ago where I just looked at Michigan's top targets and some of the players they were trending for. And, and I was like, I know it's not late in the 2023 class, but it's also not early. I mean, it, we're hitting July now. And Michigan just lost their only top 100 recruit for the class of 2023. They have six commits, just one four-star and five three-stars. It's, it's not that I hate three-stars, but... You know, generally speaking, you don't want to be landing, you know, 80% of your class should not be three stars. I don't think it will be. I think Michigan will land some four stars. But just looking at their class, and I'm going to do this again and kind of talk about how perplexing it is. They're listed as warm for all of these guys. Now, Dante Moore, they're probably in second place right now behind Oregon. I think Oregon's going to get him. There's really not much Michigan could do with that, although I do think Harbaugh struggles to relate to kids, like teenage kids, just not a great recruiter. But with Moore, it's all NIL, and he's going to get a multi-million dollar deal with Oregon. Michigan doesn't like doing that. They don't like giving out money. There's kind of two sides to the coin. But like any of these top players, Players, there's no, I mean, they're listed as warmer for Cook the Second, who's basically assuredly going to Texas. Like any of these guys, Samson Jr. from Louisiana, you know, Bowen, I highly doubt it. Jason Moore, they're at least behind Ohio State and Notre Dame. This offensive tackle's going to Notre Dame. Love, it's anyone's guess. They're trying to flip. Oh, I, I didn't know that. But guys, just all of these players, it's just such a small chance they land any of them. And it's again, it's just so perplexing because someone had brought this point up. We all just kind of assumed once Michigan beat Ohio State and broke through and made the playoffs, which they did last year, we would see an uptick in their recruiting. And it's basically stayed the same. If not, it's gotten worse. And the uptick we're seeing is with Marcus Freeman and Notre Dame and also James Franklin and Penn State. Penn State is recruiting significantly better than Michigan in 2023, which makes no sense considering Penn State's been one of the most overrated programs the past two years based off of their success. Something is wrong right now with Michigan the year you finally break through and now you finally have that recruiting ammunition. You know, Aiden Hutchinson, the number two overall pick. He was a mid-four-star. He becomes the number two overall pick. You have development. You've got Daxton Hill, who was a five-star and got developed into a first-round pick. You've got David Ajabo, who would have been a first-round pick if not for the injury he suffered. And it's just not happening. And it's like, you got to press the panic, bu panic button at this point because Michigan fans and people around the country always used to say, just wait until they beat Ohio State. Their recruiting is decent. It's top 10, but there's a... Guys, if you follow recruiting, you know there is a significant difference between the number 10 overall class in the nation and the number 4 overall class in the nation. There's a significant difference between Georgia's classes and Michigan's classes. There's just a massive talent difference. It may only be three or four spots. Michigan might be ranked ninth, and Georgia might be third, and you're only saying, oh, it, you know, it's six spots. There's a major difference, and right now... Michigan is basically at the same level they've been at the past few years in terms of recruiting or slightly lower. And Michigan fans, some of these people, they've been telling me, they're like, oh, it's just June. It's like, dude, these kids are committing. These are your your targets. You are not going to land any of these top targets. I, I, I hate to break it to you. It's just the reality. I mean, recruiting and anything can happen. But Michigan is not one of those programs that will weaponize the NIL. So this idea that Michigan's going to come in and swoop and get some of these major, like Jalen Brown from Miami, Florida. Good luck recruiting against Miami for him with how Miami throws around NIL money. Samson Jr., good luck, you know, recruiting against LSU for him. Cook, good luck recruiting against Arch Manning in Texas with their NIL collectives for him. You know, none of these guys are realistic. And then the Dante Moore thing, again, it's unfortunate. I don't know where Dante Moore, w if NIL was not a thing, I think Dante Moore either goes to Notre Dame or Michigan. With NIL being a thing, 
it opens up an opportunity for Oregon to swoop in. And, you know, Big Ten fans, you can't like a kid from Big Ten country going to Oregon. Now, obviously, if you're an Ohio State fan, you love it. But just in general, I mean, that's tough. Dude's from Detroit, Michigan, and he might go to Oregon. That's crazy. You would never see that if NIL didn't exist. You would never see that. But it's just like all of, and maybe they land, they're, they're going to land some solid four stars, I'm sure. Like a few of these kids I know they lead for. Hill they lead for, he's a solid player. It's nothing against low four stars or three stars, but when you recruit like this, it's going to put you in a, in a very difficult spot to contend nationally. You did beat Ohio State last year. It was a great game. Everything came together. But what happened right after that? Well, I guess you did beat Iowa after that. But after that, you face a team like Georgia, who's consistently a top four team in recruiting, and they didn't even have a good quarterback. Or maybe Georgia fans think Stenson Bennett is good. He's, he's okay. And you get just annihilated. And it was not It was a mismatch. That Georgia-Michigan game, that is what SEC fans make fun of the Big Ten for. It was a physical mismatch that Georgia-Michigan game was, the, the playoff semifinal game. And if I was a Michigan fan, I think, again, I said this in the last video I did on Michigan, Harbaugh flirting as much as he did with Minnesota, and at first Michigan fans were like, well, he just wants more money, but then it gets to the point where you're taking a job interview on National Signing Day, yeah, that's not a good look, and then Minnesota, the Vikings tell him, Thanks, but no thanks. We're going to go a different route. And now Harbaugh comes back to Michigan, and there is just no energy in the program, which is shocking. You finally beat Ohio State, and it wasn't even like it was a close walk-off field goal. You physically outmatched Ohio State and Ryan Day. And you know what? Ryan Day knows he made a young coaching mistake with the, de the way he handled the defensive coordinator situation. That's been fixed. Now they've got Jim Knowles. Now you have to go to Columbus and play Ohio State in 2022 and face the Heisman frontrunner C.J. Stroud in that unbelievable offense. So it's a major issue for Michigan. There's nothing against landing three stars. And then if you're also a Michigan fan, you can hope that some of these three-star kids you have committed, they might get bumped up to four stars. There still is going to be a number of rankings updates to come. But once you reach a certain point, Throughout the recruiting process, you start seeing all these kids, all of these top targets. You're not getting any of these kids. It becomes a major issue, and you have the massive decommitment yesterday from your only top 100 player, that linebacker, Wilson, who's probably going to Georgia, or I mean, I guess he is going to Georgia. He received about 10 crystal balls to Georgia after he decommitted. But uh, yeah, so Michigan, we'll see what they can do. They, it's just a situation where it's shocking. It is, and it's also shocking because Notre Dame has done so well in 2023. Penn State has done so well in 2023. Neither of those two teams are abusing NIL. Now, Michigan State is. Michigan State is abusing NIL. That's why they're recruiting well. But Penn State and Notre Dame, they're not abusing NIL, and they're still recruiting this well. So, just a weird situation where Michigan finally beats Ohio State and the recruiting stays the same or maybe gets worse. Now, you can't attribute it, like with Moore, to NIL, but it's not all NIL. It's just, there's just no energy within their program and it, it's shocking. It really is shocking. And I made the video last week and now their only top 100 player decommits and you look at their current commits... They have, what do they have, six commits right now? They're going to have to start reaching for kids and taking kids they didn't think they were going to have. Their top commit is 233rd. They're, oh my goodness. I don't like doing this. I don't like looking at the overall rankings this early, but this is rough, man. I'm just going to be honest. This is a rough, rough start for Michigan, and we're, at, we're basically at the midpoint. We're going into July now. So you got to get it going. You would love to have most of your class together by August so you can focus on the season, uh, but I wonder if Michigan just starts allowing lower-ranked kids or giving them committable offers. Because right now, I'm sure a lot of three-stars that Michigan has offered don't have commit committable offers. I wonder if that changes. But yeah, Michigan is on life support in terms of recruiting in 2023 after this latest decommitment. Their only top 100 player looking at their commitment list, their only top 200 player 
decommitted. So, um, but guys, it'll be very interesting to follow. What does Harbaugh do? Flirting with the Vikings. Now he's back at Michigan. How long does he last? Very weird situation. If I'm a Michigan fan, I want J.J. McCarthy starting week one. You've got a very easy non-conference schedule. Get McCarthy three games. Get him some experience. And you've got a very tough game at Iowa. So if I was a Michigan fan... McCarthy gives you a higher ceiling. He needs to be starting over Cade McNamara. That's just my personal opinion. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.